Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop at Treat Especial. Come to us not by chance, but by way of South Main Auto in New York State. Eric sent us this here Ugga Dugga gun. We are going to go through her and see why she lost her step, as well as compared to a slightly abused Ugga Dugga gun, what I've had here and only moderately abused. This here has been ridden hard, put up wet, had some hot suppers to her over the course of a year. Before we get her on the charge air, she fully charged it. We'll give her a little go. We'll drop that down a little bit. And I suspect, just looking at the countenance here, that uh, South Main Auto Dude is right-handed on account of all the wear from being put down on the ground. We got a little chunk out of her. But other than that, cosmetically, looks okay. And, of course, doing brake jobs, this, that, the other thing. Normally, this uh, elastomer would be peeling right back off of her. And it's actually holding up pretty good. Now, it doesn't sound the best. You hear the brushes there and yeah, have a whiff of that. She's, uh, if she hasn't let the smoke out a few times, she's, she's fixing to. Compare that now to the squawking of the Pernier new one. And that is a clue right there why this wouldn't be hitting nearly as hard as when it was new. Got ye old digital tack. Beep, beep. And a socket. Ah, ha, ha. Hot dog down the hallway. That's, uh, ah, like I tell the missus. Not to worry. It's a grower. Let's see. Ah, ha. Put on the old adapter kit. Could have checked that before. Got balls deep in her. Mmm. Weeble wobble. Why do I get the feeling I'm going to have summer teeth here shortly? When your spider sense is tingling, don't ignore it. 1209 Ripples. Now the newer gun with the old bat. Well, this isn't a newer gun, I don't think. This uh, Look, there's a witness mark here. I like to do that on my tools as well. Tells me when I bought it. 2017. 1114. That'd be, I guess, December. No. The month before December. I don't have enough fingers to figure it out. November. 1631. That's 30% more speed. Of course, it's the square of the speed that gives you the power. So it's not the mass of the ass. It's actually the... Yeah, it's the, it's the square of the speed. So any small change in velocity makes a huge difference in the energy impacted imparted into the impactor fresh off the charge air is the newer fewer cycles on this battery we're going to try this now just like the notre dame basilica nobody knows why it caught fire but quasimodo he's got a hunch i got a hunch it's gonna be the same yeah, sounds the same, is the same. So it's not the battery. That battery is actually still putting out the current and the voltage, what we need to get the speed out. Now, of course, this is a direct a DC motor a brushed, which means that the voltage is directly proportional to the uh, speed. So if this were, if that battery were suspect and it were to drop voltage under load, we would see a faster speed with the new battery and we don't see that to speak of so she's toy sixteen thirty six same same uh oh that's not good Got a wee bit of a weeble wobble to her anyway. Guy's steady asking where I get these. These ones, just from the usual scumbags, don't seem to hold up real great. You get them from uh, Vera, Vera. Also, not, you know, nice long, kind of the cabinet maker style, so you can get into odd spots. Because if you got this big gland on, on here, she won't get down into the crux where you need it. Now, there's the Vera there. Focus. Yeah, thank you. The Vera, Vera. There, I uh, kind of a brand whore myself, but 
they do seem to stand up quite a bit better. Peeling back the foreskin. I don't know what you'd expect. There's the, the hammer and anvil. What you'd expect in a well-used tool. Just some wear. Scuff marks. No chunks taken out. So that's kind of witness to the effectiveness of the material selection. As well as the manufacturing itself. Whiff of uh, some seal. There's some wear on the sealing face there. And we see that's where the corrosion gets in. It's just starting to, to wear that seal out a little bit. If it's a seal or just a wiper. Yeah, it's just a just a wiper. We are, however, say, seeing some wear, ways and means, on the casement. We can see in the reverse direction, it's been working. These pins, the bores are wallered out, of course, in, in this direction. That would uh, counter-rotate in this direction, even despite the fasteners being clamped on there good and proper. It's still going to work. Remember, everything is a spring. And we see it's wallered out this aluminum housing for the pin bore bearing down here i suspect he's had a go at this looking at it because there's red axle grease in there and then some sort of calcium sulf oh no oh no oh he's used um or someone has used never sees as a, a bearing lubricant which it, that's not what it's for no <laughs> Never sneeze is not to be used as grease. I'll tell you why. Because it contains, uh, not adhesives, abrasives. When you put the fastener in, there is uh, sand, silicon dioxide in there, in order to kind of clean up that hole and prevent it from galling over. There's kind of a, it's like a, a bearing material. You, you crunch it in there. It's real, very, very fine particles of, of an abrasive in never see so you never want to put that on on a bearing it uh yeah bad news bears however the bearing there's no brunelling on the race face here pins are in good shape the uh what you call it like you never smelled before is in good shape what do they fucking call that bearing cage cage and also that no brunelling on there We'll take that out, get that cleaned up, uh, use some actual Wiener Schleiden on there rather than a uh, Wiener Schleiden-like substance. On account of this being used, we can see some interesting artifacts of the fitment here. The copper heat sink fretting on the casement and some heat, some heaty spots all nice and shiny on that. That's not a mechanical component that's an electronic component and it's probably not designed to be squoze like that so depending on the uh yeah a little bit of a fitment issue no big deal but you see it is fretting and of course first rule to troubleshoot and do the easiest thing first have a look with your eyes you can see those com bars burnt ray olivered now, there's not much left of the brushes, but it's the com bars what are given high, well, the, the interface between the brushes and the com bars giving you high resistance under current, and that's dropping the voltage. There's a voltage drop across there. The voltage drop equates to an RPM drop in the motor, and that equates, of course, to a torque loss in this. Uh, mass times the velocity squared. So if, we, if we're dropping velocity, we're not getting nearly the torque out of it. I'm going to pull the flux ring off now. Uh, and now she's got zero. Holy fuck. Zero flux left to give. Not much metal stuck in there. So if, you, if this were used in a fabrication shop or somewhere there was lots of grinding, you would see an inordinate amount of schmoo in there. All we're getting is just some rust now here we got the planetary gear set speed reduction of course this motor would be spinning a thing at 20,000 repums and this thing but 1600 so there has to be some gear reduction in there we see there's lots of life left in that it's not all weeble wobbly it's nice and tight nothing sounds nasty so we'll go ahead just clean this up uh, cursorily 
Of course, after you use it for a few hours, it's going to get dirty anyway. But we'll put some new grease in there. You can see some of this has cooked off. So it has, it, this thing has worked hard. Uh, pinion gear, no wear at all on that. Plenty of life left in that. On the brushes, getting some wear on the brushes. We're going to take this commutator or uh, armature out. Try not to destroy the little tiny brushes. We're going to clean that up a, a bit. Check the bearings before we get in too deep. Making sure it's worth fixing. I cleaned off the com bars. Ooh, monkey like shiny. And there's no wear at all on them. Now, com bars are going to get dirty because they're up against the graphite. Now, the graphite smears off. It's a conductive layer and it's also lubricitous. But I think what happened was she got too hot, oxidized. The graphite sublimates and some of the adulterants get left behind. Maybe some uh, iron oxide powder, or just regular schmoo in the air and contributes to a high resistance connection there. So I'm going to clean up these brushes as best I can. Just scuff them up a little, give them a new bite. Now we have the first thing to break after we get this all shimmed up, the switch. You can see why you want a bellows on that actuator rod, right full of toxic schmoo. And that's, of course, conductive dust. And then in here, because it's a speed controller and there's a MOSFET, clearly there's some active components in here because of the heat sinking. You don't want conductive dust on your PCBs. Uh, yeah. Also, you can see the electrical connections, a little bit tight in there, have been fretting quite a bit. Luckily, this casement isn't conductive because, uh, yeah, it's short right out. But you get enough conductive dust in there, and eventually, well, I, I, I mean, that's one of the failure modes. But chances are the switch is going to crap out before this ever arcs across at 20 volts. We won't know if we fixed it until we know. I'll just put uh, some light grease, not real tactivity on there. Some light grease on the hammer. It's just going to mainly fling off of there anyway. And then we'll also put some down in the borehole here. Some fresh stuff. Just got the tip of her in. Uh, Give it her a spin of a thing. You can see it's picking up that graphite already. That's a good uh, conductive lubricating layer. That's quite normal, but then... I think when it gets uh, too thick or it burns into the com bars, that's when you get the high resistance. Another spot looks a little suspect here is the blades for the battery connection. See, so you've worn off the nickel or the chrome coating. That's very likely nickel. Focus, you. F Thank you. And uh, he also uh, preemptively put some dielectric grease on there. But the thing is, with a mechanical connection, when you're in and out, in and out. That grease picks up, schmoo, picks up abrasive dust in the air, and that's a non-conductive layer, uh, high resistance. And also, because we've worn off, you can see there, it has picked up some abrasive. We've worn off the chrome or the nickel coating. We're right down to bare copper. Bare copper corrodes, gets a green death, high resistance. And uh, she's, that's the end of her. So we're going to clean that right up and then just put some grease on there. We, we can put... Sure, I can find some dielectric grease, but I mean, any old grease will do. Well, one thing that is a concern, and I didn't notice this looking at the brushes, but this will definitely affect the brushes, is the fitment of that bearing. You see, it's been fretting. You want it constrained radially. Actually, it can grow, but it's quite loose there. So that has been fretting. And if this is off kilter, then your brushes are going to be a little off kilter and if we look at that you can see that this has been walking around this way because these brushes are wedge shaped conceivably we could use some Milrong's helper liquid shim however I don't have any green bearing retention compound and then also it kind of constrains it in the axial direction too Talk about having fun with a shitty Chinesium automatic center punch. Well, that doesn't work for shit. Why you know? Oh, you gotta really give her to get her to clack. So what we're doing is we're just putting a couple of little center punch is, and that raises up 
So that closes up the ID and it'll be a little bit tighter on that bearing. There's a, a stopgap measure just to tighten her up a little bit. That was, something's going to, well, I mean, there's going to be a bottleneck. What's going to fail next? I got her squoze halfway in and of course got her stuck. That's good. That's what we wanted. I uh, just got the jeweler's uh, strong opinion here. Tap it, tap, tap. No, she back together. What do you think? Half a turn, fart, let the smoke out. Nah. So you saw the rip. I'm slowly climbing there as she worked, warmed up. I consider myself somewhat of an expert on busting nuts. However, in this case, I was wrong. That's fascinating to me, especially when I'm wrong. I would have guessed that the batteries had a far greater effect. Just the age of the batteries had a far greater effect. You put them under load, the current draw, the voltage drops, yada, yada, yada. But in this case, this thing is actually dying a slow death. We, we tuned it up and we got it a little bit better, but it's still nowhere near the hitting capacity of the new one. Now, why is that? There's got to be something internal in here uh, with additional friction as well as possibly some of the electrical components getting some corrosion or work hardening or breaking some strands. Rather disappointed I didn't get this to chooch more better, but you know, the guys at South Main Auto uh, had their sucked their fair share of brake dust and, and rust in their eyes with this thing. 13 months in the difference. No love lost between me and the hazard fart. However, the Milwaukee didn't fare much better on my account. This, uh, you know, heavy industrial use, but 12 months. And now she, well, I had her apart and uh, cleaned her up a little bit. And she hits, she doesn't hit, it's kind of weak. It's interesting that these things die a slow death, not just you know, like it, it actually weakens off. So here's the other thing, you go to grab it, it's fine for running nuts. But you, when you actually need the Ugga Duggas and you know you got that brain itch in the back of your head, you know it's not hitting as hard as it used to, you got to get yourself another gun uh, because this one ends up being a secondary gun. It just doesn't hit as hard. Uh, here's the other thing guys always love about the hazard fart is the return policy. You know, they're always trying to get one over, get the box and put the old one in the box or bring this. I don't know if it's 90 days or a year or what the warranty is, but I don't like doing that. And it's not that I'm honest. Now let's put that fucking right out of your mind. It's that there's a, as you grow through life, there's a cosmic balance there. You getting one over on somebody else, you're actually demeaning yourself. So the other side of that is all those warranties, those two percent of guys who are, are psychopaths, they factor that into the price. So the guys bringing them back, they're not fucking over the company. They're fucking over the next guy. So that cosmic balance, you get one over on somebody, you're fucking you. You're the next guy. You are the next guy. So that is why when I buy a tool. I own it, and when I fuck up a tool, I own it. It's, it's, I don't bring shit back for warranty if I got my fair chunk of meat out of it. Excuse me. So as far as this one, it's going to be a good secondary. You got about a year out of it. Eh, eh. There's not really much more we can do to fix it. It's just getting weaker, which is a really interesting failure mode because I would have fingered for sure it was just the battery what got weaker, and that's why I had him send along the battery. But it's actually, the gun itself got weaker. The more you know. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.